Okay, today is the lecture two of the mini course on Hagar splittings and uh, dance surgery. And I will like briefly talk about the mapping class group because, um, and, and with the help of mapping class group, we will determine, uh, determine which, manif uh, which manifolds are the, uh, which three manifolds are the Hagar genus zero and one. So that's basically the uh, aim of this lecture today. So remember yesterday we um, we showed that any closed orientable three manifold is obtained by gluing two handle bodies. So not only the handle body uh, is important, but also the gluing diffeomorphism is important. And so we will choose F to be an orientation preserving um, map so that the orientations on um, the orientation induced on H and H prime will be um, well defined, not well defined, like sort of compatible with, with M. Then it makes sense for us to investigate um, the homomorphism of homomorphisms of surfaces. Okay. If we, um, between surfaces, of course, okay. Um, okay, if we have two homeomorphisms, F0 and F1, we call them isotopic if there's a homotopy FT between them such, such that at each level, FT is also a homeomorphism. And it's known that if two homeomorphisms are isotopic, then either both preserve orientation or reverses the orientation. And the other important thing we know that the isotopic homeomorphisms uh, in, um, induce homeomorphic uh, three manifolds. So we are only interested in the isotopic class of uh, isotopic class of homeomorphisms. Okay, and then it makes um, then it gives us this definition of the mapping class group, which we think about the group of all orientation preserving homeomorphisms of S. And we, we are going to take the quotient of this group by the uh, uh, subgroup of hom normal subgroup of homeomorphisms isotopic to the identity. Um, so, well, we said we want to choose F to be orientation reversing, but if you um, compose two orientation reversing map, you will get a, we will uh, you will get an orientation preserving map. So. This group uh, is index two subgroup in the group of all homeomorphisms of F. Then there, there's also a way to um, see all the or, like, like orientation reversing homeomorphisms from basically from the mapping class group. Okay. So we have a set of generators in the mapping class group I mean, this element, okay, there is an element that we can think of in the mapping class group that if we take any simple closed loop in the surface, we can basically cut the surface along that curve and, and then rotate one end by 360 degrees and glue it back. And that turns out to be an element, in fact, a very important element of a uh, mapping class group in fact, Likurish showed that um, the mapping class group of a surface, uh, surface of genus G is generated by the dentists along um, these curves. Any questions so far? So as we said, we are going to focus on the, we want to understand the manifolds with like small genus, with small Higar genus. Let's, let's look at the first one when the, the genus is zero. We already showed that if we take two, three balls, we obtain a stream. And now with Alexander trick, we will see that this is actually the only manifold we can actually get. Um, Okay, 
So the only closed three manifold of Hagar genus is zero. And the proof of this relies on um, Alexander Trick or Alexander Lemma, which state that which states that um, if you have a ball, uh, actually it, it says that any homeomorphisms of S3 can be extended to a disk that is that is two bounds. So which is basically um, let's identify the ball to be the vectors in R3 whose norms are less than or equal to one. Well, then S2 is the boundary will be all the unit vectors. So this lemma is basically for any, um, says that for any homeomorphism of S2, we can actually extend it to a homeomorphism of a tree ball by simply taking any um, point. Sorry, we can actually think of we can think of any vector um, in or any point in D2 by just um, like in terms of any vector in S2. Maybe then it makes more sense to just move this like this. Yeah. And this is basically T times the image of this vector for every T between zero and one. And in the light of that, if M is a manifold that is obtained by gluing two disks and sub and we know that we also know that S3 admits, S3 is also um, two disk glued to each other. Let's say the first one uh, denotes the upper hemisphere and the second one denotes the lower hemisphere. We know that we can find the homeomorphism from the first one to the upper hemisphere of S3, say F. And now since they share the common boundary, F can extend to um, D2 to here, which will imply that um, M should be homeomorphic to S3. Sort of immediate and cute way to see. And now we can move on to the genus one surfaces. Well, if we want to, sorry, genus one, three manifold, then we have to understand the homeomorphisms on um, the torus. Okay, so usually these are the common, like the generic way to choose a basis for the fundamental group of torus, which we know that it's Z sum Z and mu is the meridian and lambda is called the longitude. And if this picture describes a um, solid torus, usually it's the meridian that, um, it's the meridian that bounds the disc. And we know that uh, F1 factor, uh, factor converts any homeomorphism of F to a group homeomorphism of pi one and in the case of torus, we know that the, since we know that pi one is z sum z, uh, we also know all the homo, uh, I mean, automorphisms of z sum z, which are basically two by two matrices with integral entries whose determinant is either plus or minus one. And this plus and minus one basically determines whether the homomorphism is orientation preserving or reversing. Hence, the mapping class group is the group SL2Z, special linear, special linear group of 2Z. Um, and we know that this group is generated by the matrices, the matrices uh, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 1, 1, which turn out to be that the first one is actually 
describes the dentalist along the meridian, and the second one describes the dentalist along the longitude. which is like compatible with the, the licorice theorems. But in order to think like, as we said, we will think about the orientation reversing homeomorphisms, but they're basically the ones with determinate negative one. So we know that they're uh, in that case, they're going to be basically two by two matrices with integral entries with determinate negative one and any such matrix are of the any such matrix is of the form uh, of a matrix in SL two Z times this uh, negative one and one matrix the matrix tau. Okay, so maybe we can go over this now together. Um, Okay, so while well, M is now is a three manifold of Hegar genus one, so we know that it is obtained by gluing two solid torus. And let's say this T1 is the boundary of the first one, and let's say the, the basis for less. Um, mu sub one and lambda sub one be the basis for the boundary of the first handle body and lambda mu sub two and lambda two uh, let this pair denote the basis for the second um, the boundary of the second handle body then as we discussed we know that there is a matrix um, that F corresponds to, let's say it's, let us denote this by, um, by the matrix A, let's say it's minus Q, S, and P and R, which um, where the determinant will be a negative one, then this is one, and now we just know that if to see what this homeomorphism takes at one, um, the meridian of the first handle body, the boundary of the first handle body, we basically just um, do this. Which will be um, negative. And similarly, we'll take the longitude to S times mu two plus um, R times number two. So these numbers and, or these curves mean if if you don't know it, it's like such a curve that it wraps around uh, the median negative Q times and longitude P times. And as it turns out that uh, if we, so for the homeomorphism type of M, it's like suffices to know the image of the meridian. It completely determines M. And to see this, well, we think of the solid torus um, in two pieces where we basically take a small neighborhood of a meridian and it's going to be mapped to some curve, like some sort of like in, um, like some sort of like a strap on the other handle by the right. And the remaining is D3 and it just doesn't matter how you go to it. Um, so, the only thing that matters to determine um, M is P and Q. And also from this, you can see that P and Q are relatively prime. So 
So for any relatively prime pair of integers, you can construct a three manifold of Hegar genus one by simply, uh, yeah, in this way. And we, okay, and these manifolds are called land spaces. Um, yeah, and yeah, they're the only ones. I mean, we are going to call these manifolds land spaces. So one example is that Jonathan already mentioned S3 being, um, having um, Hagar splitting of genus one and let's investigate it further. So S3 is the boundary of a four ball, right? And we can express four ball as product of two balls. So as you see here, S3 is a union of two solid torus. But if you look at here, uh, the, uh, the meridian of the first handle body bounds a disk. But in the second handle body, uh, this S1 factor is the boundary of this because of this equation. Then this curve, the meridian should be this, should be identified to the longitude in the second one. Then we know that the meridian of the first, the boundary of like the first torus is mapped to the longitude then we can say, then we conclude that Q and Q is zero and P is one, and we conclude that S3 is actually a land space one zero. Similarly, um, yesterday during problem sessions uh, session, we also talked about S1 cross S2s. Um, that we can also see this space as like at each point at S, S1, you can consider S3 by gluing two disks together. Then it's again um, obtained by gluing two disks, but this time, as you see, they both um, the meridian, uh, like. They both bound the disk. So the homeomorphisms in this case is uh, like homeomorphism in this case sends meridian to meridian. And then we get Q is one and P is uh, zero. And it turns out that S1 cross S2 is the land space zero one. Any questions so far? I was, I went really fast actually, sorry. Well, if you think about this lemma, the way it works, we can extend it to any um, handle body of genus G in the same way. Um, if you recall, like an handle body, a handle body, we just attach like bunch of one handles. And you can basically do the same trick to any meridian, uh, right? Like you can remove each piece and then um, So what is left, it's still uh, like the meridian, you say I, meridian J. So what is left is still uh, a ball. And so we can use the same trick. And what it means that in general, uh, if we have a Hagar splitting of um, M, it's just, it's enough to know the, well, like to, to determine M, it's enough to know the images of the meridian of just like one of the handle bodies, which gives us something called um, Hegart diagrams, where we describe a tree manifold by basically taking a handle body and just like drawing these curves that were the image of one of uh, like the images of the meridians in either handle body. Okay. Okay. If you okay now if we go back 
to our e like easy examples. As you see here, the, the meridian is mapped to the longitude. Then the Hegart diagram for uh, S3 is basically just this. And similarly, if we go to the second example, as you see, the meridian is mapped to the meridian. Then the Hegart diagram for uh, S2 cross S1 is just going to be like this. And now these pictures are enough to describe any, any tree manifold. And I have one random Hegart diagram. It can also be like this. Any idea what, which manifold is this? Is that the Bonker homology sphere? Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Any question? So in, in general, mm -hmm. really you would want two sets of curves to specify, uh, you know, where the meridians from each handle body go on a, on a, on the Hagard surface. But in, in, in these pictures, you're just assuming that these surfaces bound the obvious handle bodies. So you're just notation. Well, yes, there are like some conditions on these curves and they're called characteristic curves. Well, and well, the, like the first thing, they're going to be linearly independent in the homology of the homology. Yes, they're going to be independent. I mean, they're not going to intersect and they're, they're going to be linearly independent. Can we, can we actually go back to the picture of Lemma 1.6? I didn't really sure. catch it. So we think of this like small blue cylinder is so, sort of like the annulus or not like annulus, but sort of like a small neighborhood of the meridian disk. Mm -hmm. Right, and then it doesn't matter how you glue in the D3. After no, yeah. because there's only one isotopic class of homeomorphisms of S2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the key is that after you glue in that tiny blue bit, mm -hmm. you get something whose boundary is a sphere. Yeah. And there's only one way to glue in a three ball. Yeah, precisely as Jaren said. Yeah, I think that's also an important point in these characteristic curves. When you glue those neighborhoods here, um, like for each sort of small piece, for each small uh, cylinder for every handle, like, I mean, what is left on the other handle body is basically a sphere boundary. So these curves are, yeah, we want, we also, we want these curves to satisfy that condition. Mm 